Crandon Boppins asks, what's your favorite antenna for 10 meters and why? All right. So, you know, as we've been kind of, you know, cresting towards the top of the solar cycle for the last couple of years, I've been playing around with a couple different uh, antennas for the 10 meter bands, especially in December for the uh, 10 ARL's uh, 10 meter contest. And uh, two years ago, I put up a simple 10 meter dipole antenna. They're really easy to, to, to deploy because the 10 meter band is, you know, half wave dipole is only 16 feet from end to end. And you don't have to get it up that high to really get the benefits of DX, mm -hmm. 16, 20 feet. And then you've, you've, got, that, you've got that perfect uh, half wave takeoff angle. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a super simple, easy antenna to deploy and it works well. Or so I thought this last year for the uh, 10 meter contest, I built a 10 meter J pole antenna. I was waiting for that. I was <laughs> waiting for that. I was going to say it if you didn't. And the J pole blew the dipole out of the water. <laughs> Now, there's an asterisk on this, guys. Like, I mean, if you haven't seen the video, it was not a copper J-pole. No, but... No, no, because a 10-meter J-pole antenna happens to be 24 feet long from... 25 feet from tip to tail. Mm -hmm. It is... And you got to get it up reasonably in the air so so that the bottom of the antenna is not touching the ground. You know, it doesn't... So you got to have a support of about 30 feet, you know, uh, you know, if you're going to use like a fiberglass pole or what I did is I threw a line in the tree, got that antenna up so that it just, just dangled down and that vertical half wave worked gangbusters. Mm -hmm. I'm going to assume that the propagation was equivalent between these two years, <laughs> but, um, I probably doubled my score easily with the J-Pole than I did with the with the dipole antenna. I got a lot more European stations with the J-Pole antenna because it does have a lower takeoff angle than the, than the dipole did. Um, I got a lot of West Coast stuff. The only the only downside for me with the J-Pole was the East Coast and Southeast U.S was really hard to hit. I that might have been the skip zone or something like that, but um, a lot of a lot of Europe, West Coast and South America with that with that J pole antenna. So I'm gonna say that is gonna that's right now that is my favorite 10 meter antenna. And yeah, if, um, if you can work the, the 10 meter contest with one of each and mm -hmm. just put them on a switch, I think you're doing real good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, yeah. And from where we're at in Wisconsin, uh, I think you're right. I think the skips, uh, I think the southeast is the skip zone, and ten meters is very popular in the southeast. Yes, um, Georgia, Florida, Alabama, um, all down there. That that's a big thing down there. So if you're going to work ten meters and you want to get the quick, you know, low hanging fruits, you got to be able to work the southeast. So you might be better off, you know, start off, you know, with you know, you get the dipole out to try to get some of those from our location and then you know once you once you got once you got the 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 section you know the arl section you know you know it's it's not so you know everything you know that multiplier is set so the other contacts are gravy i'd switch to the to the j because the j was just pounding into arizona california uh, oregon washington uh beautiful you know beautiful signals in into there so that was Really surprising, and it's uh, not that difficult of an antenna to make. You know, just yeah. a ladder, four hundred uh, fifty ohm window line, and um, you know, just cut it for the for the appropriate length. Attach some coax to the feed point. You're ready to roll. And I've got a video on it, and uh, you can uh, I could probably find the link here. Otherwise, just um, um, Google 10 meter J pole antenna and you will find the video. So. Now go back to my asterisk. Yep. Um, we have discussed potentially at one point in time, maybe 
in the past 10 years after several adult beverages. Mm -hmm. Well, actually making a copper pipe one. Mm -hmm. um, the logistics are a little difficult because we got to like start with like two inch pipe just to have any sort of rigidity so it's not waving in the air like this. We'd have to have guy lines. Um, yep. We would never, ever make this for production. Ever. No. I mean, shipping costs alone would be astronomical. <laughs> Copper That's prices would be astronomical. Yeah. Um, but I think one day, if we're stupid enough and brave enough, enough, we might try it. <laughs> you know, the thing that I see now that the, the, the um, not the lecture, the plumbers have is they have the crimp connectors for copper. Yep. Mm, yes. Right. And I've always thought, like, man, I would, you know, that would be the cast meow. You don't got to solder anymore, right? Um, but we need to find a willing participant that's a plumber that has yeah. one of those fancy things. So, the tool isn't cheap, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, the tool is several thousand dollars, yeah. uh, especially the Milwaukee one. But it's like, you know, <laughs> it's five seconds. <laughs> yep. So... Last year, when we had our bathroom redone, I saw the plumber using those those connectors on a few of the pipes, and it was, yeah, game changing. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I I grew up soldering pipe, you know. I I learned the hard way to plumb. Uh, <laughs> come is, here, you're, hold this, hold this torch. <laughs> there is no easy way to plumb, Joe. <laughs> no, because every plumbing project I have at my house. Takes two days, five trips to Home Depot. It is five times more expensive than after calling a plumber. And, a, and, and, and a jackhammer involves oh, a minor yeah. flood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That still was that was still the, hilarious, Joe. The Great Flood of 2017, or to the time it said, Travis, we got to go get a jackhammer. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was before 2017, Joe. I still lived in Wausau at that point. Oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> Well, now nowadays I just have a hammer drill. That would have been a piece of cake. So. Yeah, yeah. The jack there hammer you go. Hilarious. <laughs> KB9 VBR antennas are simple, effective, and affordable VHF and UHF antennas for amateur radio, MERS, public safety, and GMRS. Made in the USA with quality parts. Get yours online at jpole-antenna.com.